like our of achievers, Canada to speak to us. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. Can you hear me? Oh. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hi, Thank Jennifer. you very much. Finally, I get somebody to respond to me. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow members and guests, welcome to the joint meeting of Hong Kong Achievers and Founders Toastmasters. I'm so excited about this meeting with the girl because I know some of you are on site and some of you are online. Now, I'm online, but just in a few minutes, I will appear at the site. How excited to have such a joy meeting. And Barrett, are you here, Barrett? Barrett, our great, our great club sponsor from the founder Toastmasters would like to share a few words with all of us about this meeting. Everyone. Will you have anything to speak on behalf of uh, Founders Toastmasters? Oh, please. Yes, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So I, I want to thank everybody for coming to uh, our, our meeting today. This is a very, very exciting meeting. So thank you to our Toastmaster District Officer members and guests. Uh, thank you to the leaders uh, and members of Achiever for joining forces with us to hold this exciting meeting. Uh, Founders Toastmaster was established so that we could make the world smaller for founders of business. We want to create an environment for leaders who wants to expand their business and skill set in communication. We are an exclusive club for business founders and owners where members hone their communication skills and leadership skill to continuously add value to their businesses. We understand the importance of relationship, right? We're all sitting here uh, talking to each other, some of us face to face, some of us in Zoom. Uh, we understand that relationship, mentorship, and coaching to our member is important <clears throat> to build their business and skill set. Achiever Toastmaster, one of the most well-established club in Toastmaster, we want to learn from you. We want to leverage off your experience. You guys been around for a long time, and we want to grow as a club. <clears throat> Do we have what it takes, right? That's the theme of tonight. I believe so. As a, as a club, yet to be charter, we have lots to learn. We have some major goals to accomplish, right? We need to have 20 members to be considered as an official club. We want to ask the attendees today uh, who is interested to step up and challenge yourself and join us to be a chapter member. As a young club, I also believe we have what it takes to achieve this goal. We have members from all walks of life. We have professionals with lifetime of experience. We have members that is talented in different fields of specialties that make us successful. Do you have what it takes to join us to be a charter member, please feel free to contact us and reach, uh, reach me, Cohen, or Barat. And we also are available on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Toastmaster.com if you're interested. So please feel free to reach out to us. So that's a little bit uh, about our club. So uh, back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Jennifer, the, the presidents of the two clubs. To make this meeting possible, we have lots of hands-on leaders and facilitators. I am the Toastmaster of the one, Natalie. I'm from Achievers Toastmasters. To have all the roles will be taken by Achievers 
postmaster as well as founders postmaster. Now I'm going to introduce some of the role takers. To start with, we have Peter, uh, up until of the night. He is also the VPN of founders postmaster. Welcome, Peter. Uh, so now being an R founder, I just started by saying so <laughs> gaps are very important. Silence is gold. So instead of using a filler word like R or right or um, one can just see for. Or one can use silence very effectively. So I will be keeping a strict watch on the hours today. And at the uh, end of this uh, session, I will uh, enumerate how many hours have been used by speakers. I find that good speakers or experienced speakers are very uh, careful. They don't use so many hours. They strategize and they either go very smoothly or I would recommend that speakers today you watch your hours and instead of saying the R word, you can do the silent uh, moment, you can extend it. So I now hand the mic back to the speaker speaker of the night is Peter. She will be uh, asked a time keeper. Oh, Nervous. Nervous. I'm sorry. Nervous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, greetings, Mr. Madam Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters and guests. As timer, I will time the table of the speakers, formal speeches, and evaluations. I'll also alert each speaker. Of the time they have left using the green, am I supposed to show it now? <laughs> the green, uh, yellow, and the red cards, which denote specific times remaining. Table topic speakers should limit their remarks to no more than two minutes. At one minute, I will raise the green card. At one minute and 30 seconds, I will raise the yellow card, and at two minutes, I'll raise the red card. Those giving speeches could limit their remarks to their specific speech times. Icebreaker speeches should be four to six minutes in length. At four minutes, I'll raise the green card. Five minutes, I'll raise the yellow card. And at six minutes, I'll raise the red card. Most of their speeches should be five to seven minutes in length. At five minutes, I'll raise the green card. At six minutes, I'll raise the yellow card. And at seven minutes, I will raise the red card. The individual evaluation should be between two to three minutes. At two minutes, I'll raise the green card. At two minutes and 30 seconds, I'll raise the yellow card. And at three minutes, I'll raise the red card. Thank you, Mr. Madam President. Now we with the VPPL of Founders Postmaster. We also have some VPPL from Postmaster that people could um, connect and exchange ideas. The third role seeker is the representative of Capstan of Achievers. Capstan <laughs> <laughs> is with Kobe. Mayor uh, <laughs> of tonight. Thank you, Cash. Madam Postmaster, fellow Postmaster, and guests online, uh, as a grammarian, it is my responsibility to listen carefully to all speakers and take note of their use of language. And also my responsibility, for example, I will listen carefully for uh, improper language usage and also take note of Good use of language, for example, thoughts, words, thoughts. And also, my responsibility to, to explain to you the meaning of competence, the word of the day, competence. Having a and adequate ability 
of beauty, for example, fit a competent communicator. We are competent communicators. And legally qualified or adequate, for example, for the law profession, that means a competent witness. And at the end of the meeting, before the end of our report, give a grammarian report on all the language usage. And also, the, I encourage you to use the word of the day today meeting. The word of the day is competent, so easy, right? I'm a competent lover because I take care of my wife emotional and physically. <laughs> so, thank you, madam. Thank you, friend. <laughs> Last but not least, is our still matter of tonight. We have Stephen Austin, a very committed member in Achievers, and always taking care of all the meetings set out, all the Zoom set up for the club meetings. Stephen, what's the stage to you? Okay. Can you can oh, okay. can speak for the board. Thank you, Madeline. Uh, thank you, Madeline. And um, welcome everyone to the hybrid meeting between founders, Toastmasters, and Achievers. I don't have much to say to the audience here because my job is dealing with keeping everybody muted to make sure that they can share screens and that the audio works and other things like that. So apart from that, I will keep it short and let us get on with the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, for today is a bit different from typical meeting. Today we will have two prepared speech uh, sections, and then we will have our table topic section. At the end of the meeting, we will have our evaluation sections. And then by then, all the facilitators will come on stage again to report their observations tonight. I would like to remind you on our agenda, at the back of our agenda, you will find two QR codes where you could give feedback and also vote for the best table topic speaker, the best evaluator, as well as the star of the night. It's someone that makes you most energized. So please pay attention to that. Now, I would like to pass the stage to our first speaker. He is the club sponsor and chartered member of Founders Postmaster, and he's expecting to earn his DTM in six months' time. Do we have what it takes to be an active participant for tonight? Let's give him one of the cards. Everyone, Jerry Paul, can I hear you? Jerry Paul, do you remember this slide? Anyone remember this? Two words. 15 seconds. Tell me what you remember. For me, it remarks, it makes me nostalgic. You know why? This was the trust and bonding I made with the Achievers family. My first visit to Achievers, October 28, 2019. On that day, PH opened the door for me. PH, as you know, the ghost part of PH, gave me invite. I was a very Fresh Coast Master just joined in August and October here and with Achievers. In fact, this was my second club meeting. 
uh, outside to those zones. The first one being uh, it flows here from gap from this zone. Uh, Michael was here in this zone. So he was my window and PH was my door. And then I was given so many good mentors here. My friend Jim is here. And Eric is here. So in those Jeho moments, he had took me aside and said, here we have the then president, Eric. And this was my first meeting with him. Now you will ask me why I'm sharing this story with you. For a very simple reason. I'm talking about our relation, our my as a mentee, as an impression, what support, what love, what trust I could get from the close master family. Not one, everyone has been supporting and helping. If I start naming, maybe the seven minutes will go, and I will still not finish with the people who are helping the are from the community. Irene has been visiting her, Steven has visited her, and have all guided us in our journey. So as we get our new chapter in our journey of Toastmasters, that is from October, uh, from August 2019 into today, that is May, where because of the mentoring I got from the family, I was chosen the president of Tumchum Toastmasters. I have been serving as area director for Area K1. With the support of our division uh, director, Harman and Cohen. So, what you can see here, what I can find here is a mentee today is a mentor tomorrow. And I'm aspiring to inspire everyone. This Toastmaster family, you get so many different walks of life. And today, we have a surprise gift. In these challenging COVID times, we got access to virtual mentors from all across the world, from all fields of life. So, now I will tell you something more from my personal experience, which is only a two year experience. I'm so Honored to be here speaking to this August audience of oldest club, one of the oldest club of Hong Kong. And just tell me one thing when you do a project speech, do you learn something? Okay. Another question when you do project evaluation, do you learn something? Similarly, when you are a mentor, you learn something. When you are a mentor, you learn something. When you are mentoring someone, at that time, you understand how the other mentor felt when he was, when you were the mentor. So mentor mentee relationship is so important. Now, mentor is quite different from a coach. Coach will teach you what we learned at the achievers Diwali party. That was dancing. Can you show me the step? Okay, so today, when I start my new journey in starting a new club, which is a prerequisite for me to get my DTM, but it is not only because I want my DTM, it is also because I am passionate for startup and helping startup in various places. In various forums, and you can see me on everywhere uh, where startup infrastructure is there. Uh, President Eric had already visited Cyber Port and saw we did an event there. And you know what? In a commercial year, he helped me evaluate myself there. And this is how I have grown. This 18 month journey is an example for everyone. So, whoever is standing on the sides, therefore, Jeho means proud to be, victory be yours. And 
This coach of the family has so many mentors, so many coaches which you cannot access at all. Final question. Are we competent enough? Do we have what it takes to run our business smoothly? Yes, we have. Mentor will just help us polish our skills and find the right path, guide us towards the right path. The Great Achievers Club stands testimony to how the members have benefited and keep renewing their membership year after year, uh, so many years. So welcome my friends. Each club has a mission. Founders have a different mission, but we will be cooperating with achievers again and again. And with this, Jared Hall. Thank you. My partner in VPPR and he will be also the CTV in the next club, right? This is part of table topic matter. I don't think this will be the most exciting session, but I will say this is the most interesting session because we will see a lot of laughter later. There are many, plenty of people who are capable, but who are very shy. We call that humble, probably. But we are also having a lot of people who are incompetent, but keep it always louder than others. We call that arrogance, right? So today, in this table topic session, we will see those people here. And for me, I am competent and I am loud. Thank you, I'm powerful. <laughs> the first speaker I would like to introduce you is our incoming president of the Sandra, Paul. Please come to the stage. Thank you. For 15 minutes, that I will not get in the topic until I like to do so. Right. All right. So, for your topic is bias assessment. Bias assessment. Bias assessment. Or. So, when Mr. Table Topics Master came up with that topic, I really thought of the meeting that I came out of in the last two hours. There's an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur who was starting his own recruitment business. He'd come through and sold out a business to one of the finest private equity firms in the world. You know, we, we were touching up over a couple of years. And, you know, to me, everything he said made sense. He was a very brilliant guy, came back to Hong Kong to make his fortune. And I think to make his fortune, he did. I asked him quite pointedly, and I said, so are you an introvert or an extrovert? He paused for a second. And he said, actually, I did some fancy personality tests, and he said, I'm both an extreme introvert and an extreme extrovert. To me, that was another data point that convinced me that he was actually an excellent individual. So why do I tell you this, this story? I think when people assess situations, they immediately try to look for shortcuts. We look at, sometimes, especially in Hong Kong, we look at how people dress, what handbag they use, what situations do we find them in, to try and judge them. When I think of the topic, Dr. Master, bias assessment, I think to myself, take a step back. If, based on your intuition, you think it's worth taking the time, to not let these judgments immediately rush into the conclusion, please trust that intuition. Because statistically, I believe you'll be well rewarded for it. This is how we talk to Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for the interesting information. The assessment. Yeah, this is the interesting part. The interesting part is that I will only tell the uh, the timing sequence. And also, who will be the evaluator after the first speaker? So the interesting thing comes here. We will have two minutes uh, for the uh, speech speakers to do their uh, uh, performance here. And until the three minutes and the red card will be shown, 
And I believe our online speakers can also participate in this uh, uh, table topic session. And our table topic evaluator will be Cohen for the uh, odd number speakers. Cohen, I think you are there for uh, for the first speaker already. And the uh, even number speaker will be evaluated by uh, Jessica Lam. And I think Jessica is here as well. Yes, I can see her smiling. Yeah, have to me. Uh, the audience uh, from uh, online will be, you can still see her. Okay. And uh, and finally, we will have uh, six speakers, so we will have uh, five more slots left. And the second speaker is, uh, may I know if Jim, you are on the line? If not, then I will invite Herman. <laughs> Herman, yes, I can see you. Yeah, so unfortunate that you are the someone that I can spot on the screen at this moment. So your topic, okay, you can unmute yourself now. Herman, your topic is... Yes, already. Yeah, you, you are waiting for that, right? Your topic is arrogance. Arrogance. Herman. Wow. Do you consider yourself an arrogant person or do you experience, have you experienced to meet someone who is arrogant? Do you like them being arrogant or not? Personally, I do not consider myself an arrogant person and I do not intend to be one because by being arrogant, I will be running into a risk of ruining a lot of relationships. There's someone that I came across at work previously. Um, he used to be my staff. I recruited him after he graduated from university. Super smart, super talented. Unfortunately, he was just too arrogant. Being a professional accountant, uh, we always deal with people uh, from all around the business world. Therefore, uh, in addition to the technical and analytical skills, um, the first thing that we should have is uh, to be able to get along with different people. Uh, unfortunately, the staff uh, that I have recruited, um, he was being very arrogant uh, to the client because he thought um, I'm being a professional, uh, I am, you know, one level above the rest of the people and uh, he would be very arrogant when asking for information or communicating with the client. And unfortunately, uh, after a period of time, I got uh, some complaints from the client saying that um, my staff uh, was not communicating in a proper manner. So once I got the complaint and after I took some observations, I've decided to do some uh, coaching talk to him. I explained it to him that um, being arrogant uh, would um, hurt the relationship and would stop you from getting things done. Uh, fortunately, he gradually improved it and he now became uh, one of my uh, major staff. Uh, he had been promoted last year and he had been leading uh, a number of staffs as well. And he was able to carry on uh, my value uh, to his staff and make them um, humble and less arrogant in terms of dealing with crime. Uh, so all in all, uh, I, um, all I want to say is I do not agree uh, being arrogant. Uh, and I do believe that uh, in order to survive and succeed in the business world, uh, we need to be humble and we need to be able to build relationship in order to succeed. Back to you. Thank you. And uh, if you are in a beautiful speaker, you will get the applause here. So I don't know whether you can hear, but uh, anyway, next time you can come here. Uh, we will trim down uh, by some higher management uh, instruction. We will trim down this uh, second to be only having four speakers. So uh, we need to have two more speakers. May I know who is interested on the stage? Mm -hmm. Jay, yeah, okay. Jay, RJ, RJ, 
you are on the line, you would like to join us for the table topic. So, may I give you this question right away? I think you can unmute yourself and then give me some response. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm fine to take up a topic. You are on the line. So, please listen carefully. Your question is uh, very, very difficult. <laughs> and your title is Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Again, I think the thing is your Never mind. Is this a word that you've used for someone else? Or maybe you've heard it from someone who told you this. What is the context that we land up using this word in? Well, you might be very competent in terms of interrelationship skills and you want to make somebody feel comfortable and somebody's made a mistake, you said, never mind, it's okay. Or else you've offered some help to somebody and somebody told you, never mind, I'm fine. What is not important is just the element that you offered something or you received something. What is important is the feeling that really goes behind it. It takes you back to the days when I was a young rookie working in the corporate world. I had a manager who used to be a strict taskmaster, but he would also take very good care of his team. And one day, I had a tough challenge. I had a task and a responsibility that I could not really get my head around. And I landed up going to him and telling him, boss, I'm stumped. I don't want to, I don't know what to do now. Well, the strict taskmaster, he turned around and smiled and said, Ajay, never mind. It's okay, I understand. You might have had this stuff and this is the way that you look at it and this is the way that you solve this issue. And I learned a valuable lesson then. No matter how tough a taskmaster you are, no matter what is the expectation that you have from people around you, if you are truly a competent and a successful leader, then what you need to do is to take care of people with the right intentions behind you. And that one never mind change the trajectory of what kind of a leader I became in my life. Back to the table topics, Master. Thank you, I don't mind. I want to have a floor uh, candidate to uh, raise up your hand immediately for the last table topic. If you don't have anyone raising up your hand, I will disappoint someone on that one. May I have Alec to come onto the stage? Alec, please. Alec, your question will be even more difficult. <laughs> Which I mind. The question is KPI. KPI, Alec. To me, KPI stands for Key Performance Indicator, which means the major attributes that measures one's quality. And it is a difficult question for me because I, myself, I always do not have a very strict checklist in performing anything. So I would suggest that KPI can be measured in a variety of factors for myself or for what I consider to be um, to be successful or in my range of ability. So it may be called um, KPI is something like um, what I do on a whole, which is have a flexibility. Say, if you think that I am quiet, I may not be quiet sometimes. I can be flexible. I can be extra, extroverted in introvert. 
Or if you think that I like eating, I sometimes don't like eating. I like fasting, but <laughs> if I am too hungry, I will eat. So there is no strict rule for me because life is full of possibility and we don't really rely on only our field KPI to measure one's life and one's success. So in my opinion, KPI is just a weight measure and we just enjoy life and be happy every day. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for the uh, very informal life that uh, your KPI is on one thing. So I thought I can uh, reach your KPI level. <laughs> and uh, then I know you have all the reports already. Great. Yeah. So later we can present it. So thank you very much for joining this uh, video public session. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Whether you are on site or on the internet. Now, you can see that our tradition has sold this slide. Based in your victory in yours, it is the meaning of day old. I understood, I understand from the speaker that. Uh, yes. Uh, little problem is not so, and I, I think that it is still okay because during the speech, we have tried to explain to us the meaning of this foreign word. I think it's really important to explain, uh, especially trying to use a slide to sing foreign words because we, we are from different cultures and maybe difficult, and I can feel that. The speaker is very compassionate and he really want to share his personal story about his experience as a man he and what he learned from his experience. And I can know that from his I think from his age, he would have many experiences as a man he. Actually, he could be a, he could be a mentor for many people, but he tailor make his speech, tailor make to the audience and to this special event. This is the dawn meeting with Chivas and Mother's Christmas. Then he immediately after speech going offline about a party. We all remember the great party, especially we don't have time to have party for so long. You immediately draw the attention of the audience because it's a the Diwali party organized by us, a chief, the audience. So it immediately attracted to the audience. And he humbly say that his mentors, his achievers. We are really grateful for that. And he's and told us specific examples. About how he learned from Chivas as mentors, including a very good example with Eric, and he is really a good prop with his excitement and the captains, etc. You have chosen a very good prop. The other thing is about the specific requirement that uh, he mentioned to me that he usually talk even louder than what he has said. He tried to use a different speed uh, uh, volume. And I believe it's okay uh, uh, because uh, from what I heard, and maybe you can also find more variety, uh, the local variety, and that will make your speed even uh, better. Uh, all in all, I think you have to give a very good speed. You can feel the energy. You are really a competent speaker. Back to you, Coach Master. Now, I would like to invite our table topic master Todd on the stage again to host the evaluation session. The table topic.
Thank you, Postmaster of the evening. I guess uh, Cohen and Jessica, you are on the line. Cohen, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Uh, Cohen will be evaluating Paul and Hardy's speech, and Jessica will be evaluating Herman and Alex's speech. So without further ado, I will get uh, Cohen to do on stage for the evaluation. Thank you. Paul, your topic was biased assessment. Now you spoke about people jumping to conclusions and you quickly related that to your current situation. Like for example, you are making this speech now and you are tempted to jump into conclusions. And you mentioned that people jump into conclusions is because of bias. Everyone has bias. So what can we do, right? So now what are the, some of the things or some of the skills you already possess as a speaker? First, you are confident. You already have the seats of a very good speaker. Second, you spoke in a very measured manner, slowly, confidently, and yet animated. So you had a lot of movements. What are some areas that you can improve on? First, I suggest that you can use a story. A story of a person who made a biased assessment. What did he say? What did he do that was biased? And from that story, you bring out a lesson that you have learned observing this person. And also what he has learned from his own actions. To so bring out that lesson. And three, at the end, challenge the audience that from this story that you have told, can we or can we not make bias assessment when we speak? All right. Now, second speaker is AJ. Never mind. AJ is a accomplished speaker. You will notice that he would speak. Uh, he repeated the topic so that he has time to think. He paused. Is this a word? And then he set a challenge for us to set the context. And when people say, is it a mistake? It's okay. Now, you shared the story with us about you, your time in the corporate world, and then you had a strict boss, and then you faced a challenge, you got stumped, and then the strict boss smiled, and he said, never mind, I understand. What are some of the things that you have already possessed as a, as a speaker? Again, you were confident. You were very composed, standing up. You look straight into the mirror. You smile. And this is the traits of a successful man. You used a very tried and tested method of bringing a story and bring out a lesson, which you did perfectly well. And you ended the line with an audience to bring home something like a small never mind can motivate your staff. What's some, what are some of the things that you can work on? Now, your story was good. It was chronological. You spoke about what happened and a stronger story type you can use is one that is more emotional, one that touches the heart of the audience. For example, the task that you know, did not just stump you, but made you question your own abilities, and then you went into a depression. So there's emotions involved, and you could easily use your facial expressions and voice to convey them, perhaps even silence. So AJ is a very established speaker. I hope everyone here can learn from his short table topic speech. Topics master. Thank you, Paul, for my And uh, we will have our next evaluator giving the evaluation for our board number to the public speakers. May I have Jessica to be on stage? Thank you. It's my honor to give my feedback to the second table topic speaker and four table topic speakers. I'll say they are both very competent. His speaker was ignorant. His topic is about arrogance. What can be very well is that he directly addressed the questions. Even though I guess he might be a little bit surprised that he was picked because he is the GE of tonight. And I think he's very calm and he could directly answer the question pretty well. He shared his own story 
in his workplace, and they're very easily connected with his story. That's very good point for for delivering his speech. Also, he told us how he told his staff to be a better person. I think we learned a lot from him. I think for for her to consider to improve is that I believe he is a very good person, very humble, very calm. What I would suggest is he could have more emotion in his speech. Why do I say that? Because if I have a colleague who, who is so arrogant, then I would actually not quite this. I mean, I would just like him when he talks to me. Maybe I'll like, he's so arrogant. How can I do with to live like that? But Herman is like, uh, my colleague is very arrogant, so I will talk to him. And then he becomes in communication. So I think he could add more emotions. The fourth speaker is Alex. He did very well as well. I believe that he didn't have much idea about what to say on the KTR at the beginning, but he could still develop his story, his, his speech along the line. And he could start from having no idea, but then deliver, develop his speech step by step. I think as an audience, I will feel that he has been doing very good in this table topic session. What I would suggest Alex to do more was that since I was sitting very close to him, I could feel that he was a little bit nervous. Uh, even though his, for example, Boris' projection was pretty well, but I could feel that he was a little bit nervous sometimes like this. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but I could feel his nervousness. So what I would suggest is that he could practice more on stage, then he could relieve his nervousness. But all in all, I thought that both of them did very well and they have what it takes to be good speakers. Back to you, Todd. Thank you very much. And I pass back the time to our postmaster for the evening. Thank you. So the next question is our reporting section. This is how we learn and improve, then we can become more competent speakers. The first facilitator I would like to invite back to the stage is our art counter, Deeper. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Madeline. I will now go through the list of Ask that we use this evening. Bharat. Till, till Bharat, I don't think anybody used ours. So I was all ears and I was like hanging on to every word. Bharat used one hour. Irene, who was the second uh, speaker for the day, she has used 13 hours. And uh, George. Todd was coming up and then again going, so I was able to count two hours. Madeline, you used two hours. Victor, who evaluated the who evaluated the public speech, used uh, five six hours. Joyce, who evaluated Irene's speech used uh, five, seven hours. And Quinn, while evaluating the table topic speakers, used two hours, three hours, sorry. Jessica used one hour. And now the table topic speakers, Herman used 25 hours. <laughs> Alec, who spoke on KPIs, used three hours. 
So I think that takes me to the end of my our counting for the day. <laughs> oh, this is, this is magic. Thank you, Peter. And once again, I would like to remind you all to post for the test evaluator, test table topic speaker. Because for prepared speech, we only have just 10 slides, so we won't be voting for the best speakers. But you're welcome to just have big time. And also, Sarah, remind you. Now, I'd like to invite Nariz, our timekeeper, to teach the report. And thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll start with Barat. Your speech was seven minutes and 35 seconds. I read eight minutes and 51 seconds. Paul's was one minute and 48 seconds. Herman's was three minutes and four seconds. And AJ, two minutes and 16 seconds. And Alex, two minutes and 12 seconds. Uh, Victor, three minutes and 26. Joyce, three minutes and seven seconds, two minutes, three minutes and 27, and Jessica, three minutes and 22 seconds. So Paul wins the prize for um, doing it within time. Then we'll have the grammarian reports to be done by Fred. Thank you, Fred. Hello, Postmaster, Madam Postmaster, and yes, we did very well tonight, uh, except one incident. One of the members took over the grammarian role to explain the Hindi word. But it was a lie, like a problem with the OS. A lot of good news of English. Let me, let me say. We learn new Hindi words. Yahoo! Forget about me. Forget about me. I like, I like your, your word, your quotation. The new chapter in our journey of Tom Master with Barak. The Menti today is a mental tomorrow. Very well said. The new year after year, your membership. Again and again. Very good news, right? Reason. I don't like song, but I like it. Renew your membership year after year, and again and again. Uh, Irene, I like your your saying. I love that line. I really like it. Okay. And Madeline. Uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, sir. <laughs> uh, okay. Mm. Mm, for example, Paul trust that intuition. Really like it. Herman, Herman is, I don't understand this. I search Google. What is Ocean Park? Anyone know? <laughs> I Google and it said a tool to share talent issue, outstanding issue. Okay. Uh, but active and resource that Cameron did to his and he promoted him now. Still, ocean talk. Nobody ocean talk to me. Uh, okay. And on uh, mine, AJ, I really like your. I don't know, are you an engineer? You change your trajectory. <laughs> I can change my point of view. Change your trajectory. I really like it. And uh, Alex, life is full of possibility. So positive. Except I don't like fighting. Fighting. That is not my question. Ah, Poen. Use a tried and tested method. I mean, know to work and to be efficient. Very well said. Very well said, my friend. Okay. Let's let us put our hands together to work. We have use of the words of the day. We have three. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is 
Para, para. Okay, okay, okay. And Victor, thank you, Victor. Even though we took over my comparison more. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are honored to have invited Herman to be our general You will be evaluating those who have been evaluated. To introduce a bit about Herman, he is from Synergy Postmaster and he is the ex direct Division K Director. Now, that's the stage to hear Herman. Hey, thank you very much, Madeline. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, once again. Uh, this is Herman, the general evaluator. My role for tonight is to share my feeling uh, to all of you from someone outside of the Toastmasters. Uh, I will be telling you uh, what you've done well, and I'll be sharing uh, something that I've seen elsewhere that may help you do even better. And hopefully by doing that, uh, we will all become better Toastmasters and run better Toastmasters meeting. First of all, something that I like a lot, uh, you know what that is? Guess what? Meeting started on time. Well, you think about it, um, hosting a high bid meeting uh, takes a lot of effort and you guys need to arrange all the technology, make sure everything works, you tested everything, uh, before you can get started, but still you managed to start the meeting on time. I'm so proud of you. Please give yourself a very big round of applause. The other thing that I like about uh, this meeting is not only are we voting for the best table topic speakers and the best evaluators, uh, we are also voting for the best role taker, uh, which is definitely a great thing uh, for those of us uh, who are only taking roles but not taking speaker or evaluator spot, uh, it would definitely give more motivation to us uh, who will be taking facilitators roles in the future. So this is a great initiative. Uh, I really like that. I've seen it elsewhere in Taiwan and China. Um, so I'm actually glad to see that uh, happening in Hong Kong as well. Uh, in terms of the road tickers, uh, first of all, uh, TME Madeline, uh, you are definitely a competent MC for the meeting. Uh, you spoke very clearly uh, in terms of introducing uh, each of the meeting section as well as uh, each of the speakers and the projects that they were working on. Um, one thing that I love about you is uh, before the meeting, you actually text me and ask me to give a self introduction uh, so that you can present on stage. Uh, I, I really like that thought. Uh, definitely very thoughtful and shows that uh, you do care uh, about uh, you know uh, all the speakers, facilitators, and, and the guests who will be coming to the meeting. So that's well done. Uh, something that I, some question that I had during the meeting was, I remember you were asking uh, us to leave comments and to vote uh, for the best um, table topic speaker uh, and the best uh, evaluator, whatever. Uh, you mentioned about the QR code. Um, one thing that I alerted me was, um, where's the QR code? Because I cannot find the QR code. Because by printing out the agenda, I could not find the QR code. But luckily, the Zoom master, Stephen, had texted us in the chat room uh, and shared us with the link. Uh, so that's well done. Um, and I can see very clear that uh, you guys have worked really well together and prepared everything well in advance. So that's great job. Uh, and second thing is uh, please watch out the camera location. Uh, just to make sure that not just the on-site audience can see you, but also the online audience can see you as well. Uh, but that's a very minor point. And then moving on, uh, our counter, uh, Deeper, and Timer, there is. I would say both of you have worked really hard through the meeting, you know, uh, as new members. It would be extremely challenging 
to be able to stay alert throughout the whole meeting and to take the time spent by the speakers as well as taking all the unnecessary sounds. Uh, from the reports that you have provided to us, I can see that you have definitely put in the effort. One feedback for the timer is that as a table topic speaker uh, from the online environment, uh, for some reasons, I could not see the timer card. I, I wasn't sure uh, it was because uh, you have fresh it too quickly or because uh, I have actually ignored it. Uh, there are a couple of things that we can consider doing in the future. First of all, for the on-site on timer, uh, you may want to hold the timer card a little bit longer um, and just to make sure that the speaker can see the card before uh, you put it down. That's one thing that you can consider doing. And second thing that we can consider doing is maybe in terms of uh, in addition to getting one on-site timer, maybe we can get one online timer as well. And before the online speaker uh, speaks, starts speaking, uh, the MC can start, uh, start asking uh, the speaker whether he or she will see the timer before he gets started. Uh, just like how we do it uh, in the area, division, and district level contest. Uh, something that you may consider doing. Uh, and also for uh, our counter and timer, um, you guys have spent a lot of time, you know, uh, reporting uh, how much time we have spent and how many unnecessary songs we have made. I would encourage you um, to take advantage of using a whiteboard or put that on a PowerPoint, show it on the screen or show it on the whiteboard, right show it to everyone. Uh, that way you can uh, save time. Uh, to read out the results and spend more time on uh, providing more specific feedback uh, on our performances. And Fred, uh, as a grammarian, uh, what can I say? Um, you have definitely done a great job. Uh, you encourage us to use the word of the day and you have also provided uh, very good examples on the good use of uh, grammar, words and sentences. Uh, you provided a lot of examples, very encouraging. Um, love it. And last but not least, we have the four evaluators, uh, Victor, uh, Joyce, uh, Cohen, and Jessica. Uh, all of you are very competent uh, evaluators, uh, very encouraging, and provided some very meaningful feedback to the speakers. Something that we have learned, uh, I would just share it here. Um, we learned that, that uh, when we give a speech, uh, we need to tell a story, share a lesson, and in conclusion, um, we can consider giving a challenge and try to influence our audiences. And for table topic, it is a good idea to start with a question so that we can think about what we want to say in the next two minutes uh, to, give us, uh, to give ourselves a little bit of time to organize ourselves. And Jessica, thanks for um, telling me that uh, when doing a speech, uh, I should put some emotion. Uh, maybe I'm just uh, being too professional in terms of my daily work. And as a matter of fact, I have to go back to my work after this meeting. So I'm still in the working mode. Uh, thanks for telling me that up to put in the emotion and I'll definitely keep that in mind. Uh, I saw the red card, so I think I should stop and uh, let you guys go for dinner. All in all, um, a very professional hybrid meeting, uh, well conducted. Um, I definitely enjoy it and I look forward to coming back next time. Thank you. Back to you, Madeline. Guys, are you enjoying the meeting so far? Yeah. Thank you. I think I think the EXCO and the, and the team behind the team has done a great job. We have set up a TV station here. I know I can put it. This is now the award presentation section. The first award is the best table topic speaker. Okay. 
The second award is the best evaluator. And someone on four again is Poland. <laughs> and finally, it's star of the night. Oh, I don't know. He makes all of us laugh. Okay. No, no. Because I can't see it's all of Thank you, everyone, for your active participation. I enjoyed the meeting very much. Before we close, our chair lady and our president from Congress Toastmaster would like to give us closing remarks. Jennifer, please. Hi, so thank you. Thank you, Madeline. <coughs> what an exciting meeting today. Uh, <coughs> So thank you so much, man. And you, you did a great job introducing the roles today. So great energy. I loved it. You know, this is a hybrid meeting. This is our first face-to-face -face meeting, you know, for our founders. So this is great. You know, thank you for that. Thank you, Achiever, for, for making this happen. You know, thank you for, for setting up everything, right? This this wasn't easy. So thank you so much. You know, I think everybody done a very good job. Irene, great movement. But Rat, you know, you made this happen, right? You met achievers and you made it happen tonight. So thank you for that. Paul, you know, great information, you know, talking about uh, statistics and talking about different things in your table topic. Herman, great arrogance, right? You know, you're talking about arrogance. You, you bring up a great story. AJ, you know, your, your energy, your connection with the audience, you looked into my eyes and we weren't even sitting next to each other. So that, that was great. I love it. So thank you for being our mentor because uh, you, you got great, great experience behind you. Jessica, you know, I can hear the cheerfulness when you evaluating, you know, it's so much encouragement for everybody. So I, I would like to close off. We have a meeting in June 3rd. In Tencent, we start in Guntong. So we have a 6 p.m. meeting. So as you can see on the screen, this is our next meeting that's coming up for Founders Toastmaster. Pitch your idea. So for, uh, for entrepreneurs, right, come and, and use us as a launching platform to pitch your ideas so that we can help you evaluate your pitch and make it even better. So please come join us and do your pitch and we will try our best to evaluate and improve your uh, communication skill. So thank you so much. Uh, back to you, Toastmaster today. Thank you. And also some of you from other fellow Toastmaster Club. Welcome. And in fact, every Monday we have our meeting. If your club uh, wants a meeting on Monday, you're welcome to join us as well. There is no rule that you cannot join more than one Toastmaster Club. And for, in case in the audience, if there is someone who hasn't joined any club yet, I encourage you to find one Toastmaster Club, no matter it's Founders Toastmaster or Sanctuary, or I think you can't join more than Sandy unless you are the staff, right? So <laughs> if you want to join more than Sandy, first join the company first. <laughs> it's very important that we have ongoing Toastmaster training so that we can be a leader and we can be a better speaker. Now, has just announced about their community. So feel free to join Hong Kong Achievers. You can 